my moves like my ABC. Who needs enemies? Architecture a sole or dominant agent in game design, which was one of the topics at Digra. Rather than architecture specifically, let's talk about environment as a whole. Environmental hazards in games at the moment tend to be fairly limited and a lot more predictable than enemies to fight, which is part of the reason that combat remains the preferred form of opposition in both computer games and tabletop role-playing games. They're more unpredictable, they're more varied, and combat is much less capricious than other environmental hazards can be, as well as being much, much more interactive. The shapes of buildings or environments can hide treasure, but passively, and visual cues as to where the treasure might be are difficult to get right. You want to provide the chance for something to be found, but you don't want it to be too easy. In tabletop games this is generally reduced more to a simple, relatively non-interactive expediency of a search or notice roll. Get the score, find the treasure, quite dull really. Um, but the low bandwidth of oral description makes a fully role-played investigation of a search a boring and rather non-fun prospect. Areas can be hostile, hot coals on a floor, a lava pit, or a trap, but many of these are again relatively non-interactive. You avoid the fire pit, you roll to check for traps, and then you pick your way around them, and so on. Springing traps completely without warning on a player is capricious, and this often eats into the fun, at least without a nearby respawn mechanic. Buildings can be labyrinthine, but that's a much more passive form of challenge. Finding one's way in a maze. But again, balance is important. How rapidly does this become boring and frustrating rather than fun? Gaining entry to fortifications or passes to get across bridges and into towns is often used as zone control in computer games or as short-term goals in tabletop, but these tend to be choke points in the story. One thing the original Deus Ex computer game did well was to offer you multiple ways around obstacles, just as we might find multiple ways around issues in our day-to-day -day lives. This is easier to cope with in tabletop, but in computer games requires considerable structural design effort and extra work to account for all the alternative routes that many players might opt to take, and many of them might not opt to take. As such, on a budget, it can be hard to justify, and this is why even ostensibly open world games still lead you around by the nose along a quest chain. Computers simply can't cope with improvisation the way a human games master can. So, what about the environment proper? Dealing with heat, cold, exposure, sleep, rest, defecation, urination, starvation, thirst, even just the seasonal changes of weather are all big mechanical prospects for games, especially graphical changes by season. And in tabletop games, these kind of specialist rules can often lead to rapidly getting bogged down in highly detailed number crunching that rarely has any bearing on play and just gets in the way. Even dramatic weather like blizzards or storms are usually only a background element in games there to add flavour, mood, or to increase the difficulty of more interactive challenges around the player, fighting in a rainstorm with wet powder for your musket, as opposed to fighting on a clear bright day, for example. So how can we make the environment play a greater role, let alone the only role? Hard to say. Creating game mechanisms for survival requirements would be cumbersome. If that wasn't the main, perhaps the only focus of the game, it's probably not really worth it. But it can add motivations and shape action at an abstracted level. Minecraft requiring you to eat forces you to occasionally hunt or to build and defend a farm as part of your fortification, so it helps shape play, while the snow covering is mostly just an annoyance and an aesthetic cue. The night as an environment means monsters, which is one of the biggest shapers of the survival experience in that game. In general, you could argue that in zombie games, zombies are an environmental hazard much more than they are something to fight, really. They designate areas to avoid. What's missing from existing environmental hazards in games is the skill, the unpredictability, the interactivity that comes with combative opponents. Perhaps the way around this is to, rather than have on-off fail success states with environmental hazards, have odds, chances and risks relating to the environment. As an illustration of what I mean, let's imagine a character trying to climb a ruined tower to get to some treasure at the top. He's presented with the usual sort of challenges here, missing staircases, crumbling walls, perhaps there are bats or birds nesting here to complicate matters. Under a more challenging and skillful proposal, the tower wouldn't have set areas that will or will not collapse under pressure, but rather different sections with different odds of collapsing as you climb. 
They can be visual or descriptive cues. Perhaps some of these areas have more cracks, more missing bricks that demonstrate where it's weak, and other cues where it's strong. More solid blocks with less weathering, roots from shrubs binding the bricks together, that sort of thing. There will be no guarantee that the safest looking route wouldn't collapse or that the unsafe looking route would. You'd be playing the odds rather than memorising the environment or checking an FAQ to find the one true safe route. Perhaps you could also climb the wall instead if you chose to. A ruin has plenty of handholds after all. But the birds or bats would have an assigned chance to fly out and startle you. Mossy stone would mean you're more likely to slip, as would guano. If the environment was raining, or perhaps in a storm, sections might be more likely to collapse, as the structure would already be under strain, and climbing might be more difficult. This would draw you in to being more aware of your environment, assessing the risks to your character and making quick decisions and recovery moves in response to what's happening on screen, rather than going to game FAQs and finding the one true way to do it. And that's just a model or an example using stereotypical, familiar mechanics, but I think it does show one way in which we could make game environments into a more viable, primary challenge in games, and perhaps even, for some, replace combat.